Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Wow, welcome everybody. Thank you, this is a very charming, happy Italian welcome here in Milan. Welcome to the Yamaha Motor Europe's World Press Premiere for ACMA 2018. It is my honor to be standing here to present to you the future of Yamaha at this amazing venue. Now, not only have we got many treats in store for everyone here in our audience, but for those of you who are streaming live on the Yamaha social channels right now from across the world, as well as our other Italian viewers streaming from or watching from the Sky Sports Moto GP channel. Sky Sport Moto GP channel, so benvenuti anche tutti voi. This is the Yamaha press premiere, and Yamaha is made of products that always rev our heart. We're going to be up for a lot of surprises tonight as we unveil the outstanding products of 2019, and I would love to invite you to join in on social media channels with hashtag keep on revving. Now, as we start this wonderful journey into Yamaha, to start us off, uh, it's my pleasure to bring on stage none other than the leader of the Yamaha group today. Please welcome Mr. Please welcome the president of the Yamaha Motor Company, Mr. Yoshihiro Hadaka. <laughs> Thank you, Ini. Thank you. I'll leave you the stage. Yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to be with you here in Milan for the first time as a new president of Yamamura Group. And I'm truly happy to officially welcome you all to this special event for our company. It is clear that the European market consistently represents a key strategic part of Yamaha's global business today and also in the future. Our general business direction is to keep working as a unique company, continuing to achieve dynamic milestones. From a long-term perspective, our business is positioned over the next years to reliably reach greater corporate strength, maximizing sales volume and profitability, which is remaining stably high, also looking to the third quarter of 2018. High profits result to enable significant reinvestment in three key areas, which mainly represent the cornerstones of Yamaha current growth strategy. Firstly, we reinvest in research and constant innovation, continuing to test and develop technologies in new fields, proving how Yamaha is open-minded when it comes to the future. No matter the number of wheels or propulsion system, Yamaha will be more and more an active player in the growing world of personal mobility with its own way and style. In the last year, it has been the case of LMW leaning March Hoyer, one of the symbols of Yamaha leading technology, which is one of the main areas that we commit to keep developing. The primary significant results have been demonstrated by the introduction of Tristy. We are adding tonight something new you will see later. And Niken, the first three wheel sports tourer motorcycle, which we introduced successfully just one year ago here in Aikma, and that will have already something new to show tonight as well. Secondly, investments in lifetime relationship with our customers. We always try to think as them, respecting and understanding their needs, and then acting timely. Our aim is simply to exceed their expectations without any exception. We work to keep demonstrating it by offering quality products 
and great experiences to people of different ages, cultures, and communities. We want to support their significant potential using not only technology for its own sake, but adapting solutions and technology connecting with who is looking for a more fulfilling life. As part of our process of investments in innovation, I must mention the new outstanding Yamaha Motor Advanced Technology Center. Based in Yokohama City, Japan, this center aims to further advanced technology development in the robotics, artificial intelligence, and IT fields to promote open innovation. As a hub for development of advanced technology, such as AI, IoT, motion control, and image processing in the robotics field, we plan for this center to progressively develop advanced specialist human resources in each field in order to promote next generation robotics technology development as well as utilization of technology from the artificial intelligence and IT fields such as data science and digital marketing. Third, for Yamaha innovation means also electrical vehicle development. TYE concept, the first Yamaha electrical trial bike designed to optimize the unique advantages accelerated with electrical power. With a high rotation type compact high power electrical motor that achieves high off-road performance with both powerful low speed torque and extended acceleration. TYE has already competed and won in 2018 in the FIM Trial E Cup and in the IS Superclass of All Japan Trial Championship, representing the official Yamaha factory racing team. Power Assist Bicycle, which provides superior e bike technology, reliability, and pure ride performance for outdoor enthusiasts looking for new adventure and excitement. Yamaha invented in 1993 the world's first electrically power-assisted bicycle. Since then, it has been constantly developing this market to deliver the most innovative and easy-to-use power-assist system, offering new value and new scenes for bicycle riding. Thanks to these innovative products, we are today recognized as a worldwide pioneering leaders in e-bike market with over 2 million bicycles and 4 million drive units created to empower our customers. Therefore, it is with a real optimism that we look towards the future. Our commitment across all areas of business is to be totally customer-centric. Therefore, before we embark and execute any product or activity, we previously consider how it will be perceived from customer eyes by actually putting ourselves into his position, developing solutions that could fit him. Five years ago, we introduced the brand slogan, Lives Your Heart, to express our ideals. Like rising levels of engine, we aim to deliver the ever greater excitement to the heart of people and to create exceptional values and experiences that enrich the lives of who encounter the Yamaha brand. Our passion and energy have been crucial in creating values for Yamaha brand, crafting strong engineering, manufacturing, sales and marketing, and customer support initiatives 
and then achieve the very best possible result here in Europe too. Through Jesus' strong passion and energy, we are really committed to continuously demonstrate our brand slogan to our customers and all stakeholders. However, there is still work to be done. From today onwards, holding on to Jesus' ideals and passion encapsulated within Lives Your Heart, we must all keep working together toward our greatest goals to further improve the value Yamaha brand, making it truly shine more and more. We have to constantly keep on living. In closing, it is my great pleasure to be with you all here tonight, and I would personally like to thank you for joining us for our ECMA Press Premier 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hidaka-san. It's been Thank wonderful you, to hear from you about where Yamaha is headed. Yeah. I'm sure you'd be pleased to sit yeah. back now and enjoy the rest of the presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, as I'm sure you can all see, we are in a Yamaha universe. Should we start the journey? Come on in. So ladies and gentlemen, the white colors around this stage mark our arrival into urban mobility. And this is the place for the commuter scooters, for those city dwellers that need to get from A to B in a really fast, smart, affordable, and easy way. And now to take us through the brand's strategy on this specific market, it's my pleasure to welcome Yamaha Motor Europe Marketing and Motorsport Division Manager, Mr. Paolo Pavezio. Hello, Paolo. Thank you Hello, for joining evening. us tonight. Good evening. And good evening, everyone. It's always a big pleasure for me to be back uh, in Italy, living abroad for five years now, to see so many media friends, but also to see all the colleagues uh, from Yamaha coming from all around the world in EGMA, which is definitely the global event for Power to Wheels uh, market. And coming to your question, yes, let's say few brief words about uh, our strategy in this segment, which is, of course, one of the key ones in Europe, especially in the south of Europe, where we know there is a very strong increase in urbanization, so population is really moving to big cities more and more. Three quarters of the population is actually living in a city, and they have a simple need to commute with freedom, to commute with affordability, to commute uh, to enjoy better their, their own, uh, own life. And, of course, Yamaha is committed on scooters since years, but three years ago, we have made a milestone. We have introduced for the first time, as Idaka san was saying, our lean in multi-wheeling technology in the scooter world, in a scooter segment with the three CD, which has been a growing success in Europe over, over the last years. Uh, we have now more than 22,000 customers riding uh, the scooter around, around the urban cities around Europe. But it's not just about the ones which are riding Tricity, because also Tricity is a perfect vehicle to feed the growing share economy, which is also a clear fact. And as you can see, we have example in Italy with zigzag business, but we have also example in France with Rupi. So there are ways, there are different ways to enjoy a city, but there are also different ways uh, to, use, to use our product. Uh, and the sharing economy is something where three city is really perfectly fitting in. However, all those customers which are riding in Tricity are also asking more. Some of them are asking more to us, are basically asking uh, a kind of higher performance to enable them to 
better enjoy not just the city center, but also the ring around the big city, but maybe also to enjoy the weekend, to have more space on board, to have more comfort when they ride the, their vehicle. And so we really felt it was the moment. The market was ready. We were ready to make a further step, uh, bringing uh, the linear multi-wheeler technology back once more in the urban mobility, but, but with something which will enhance the package, I would say. All right, well, I feel like you've really piqued our curiosity there. Are we ready to reveal this first bike? Yes, we are. Come on! Woo! Woo! Gentlemen, the new 3CT prototype. It looks pretty magnificent up here in the flesh now, Paolo. Can you talk us through some of the specs of this bike? Yes, here we are with the first uh, surprise of the evening. As we were saying, this is a prototype, this is a concept vehicle, but this is a very important and clear statement for us because it's showing how we are planning to develop further our three city family in Europe and not just in Europe. As you can see, we are clearly increasing uh, the dimension, of course, uh, but also the capacity and the potential performance of this vehicle. But we have really worked to do this in the Yamaha way, which means uh, we're trying to apply anywhere what customers are asking to us, which in this case is uh, as much as possible a light feeling when they ride it on top of the stability of the third wheel. We have a full new tilt lock system, which is powering the front part of this vehicle, which is working basically without engaging suspension. And not engaging suspension, one, you save weight, and you will discover this in the future when we will unveil the final product, but you save weight, I can promise you, and you have a much smoother operation, either in the start and stop, which is the typical situation at the traffic light, but also when you need to move the vehicle in a parking situation. The second thing which, of course, we cannot deny, you see the concept, is that uh, the new 3CT is powered, will be powered by our best-in-class 300cc scooter engine. We have launched it this year. It's really a special force which is moving and will move this vehicle based on our Blue Crew technology. Again, this is the direction we are preparing for the coming future, injecting our linear multi wearing technology in the urban mobility, bringing three city promise further. Well, thank you, Paolo. Thank you. This is the three CT prototype, but I know that this isn't the only scooter in Yamaha's portfolio, is it? No, of course, this is not the only one. And uh, as you know, there is more to come in another world. So we've just seen there, we have got another dimension to your scooter offering. 
Yes, I would say we are in our dimension because, uh, of course, scooter is our, one of our core segments we are engaging, but this is the sport scooter world, the one that has been created by Yamaha 17 years ago, the one which was born in 2001 with the iconic T-Max, as, as you can see, as having really a growing success around Europe. A having achieved this year more than 650,000 units uh, sold. Of course, as I was saying, T-Max has been the foundation of this segment. It's still the best-selling maxi scooter in the sports segment in Europe. However, as we can see for the chart year after year, the weight of the X-Max family, which has also been increased, has grown a lot. And the success of the X-Max was really uh, impactful in the, in the past years. Achieving, as you can see, more than 380,000 vehicles sold only in, uh, in the European market. And, of course, last year with an incredible success of the fully renewed X-Max family, which is composed by three different displacements, the same bodywork, and another thing we have clearly noticed has been the growing success of the 300cc version, which has arrived to perform 50% of the total XMAX sales, with 17,000 units this year. This is the forecast for December lending. is the number one sport scooter overall in the European market. Of course, we are proud of this. Of course, uh, we are happy that customers are appreciating the product we are proposing to them. But we also know, and we know it a lot from TMAX uh, experience, uh, that those customers are demanding customers. They are looking into Yamaha Sport Scooter for, per per for performance, uh, from, uh, let's say, riding experience, but also from premiumness and finishing. And this is the reason why we have decided already at the second year of the new XMAX generation to apply a kind of special recipe and a special treatment to the family. All right, so there's a special edition model coming up. Yes. Well, let's see it. The basic recipe of X-Max is very successful. It's the most sporty scooter in its class. It's agile, full new ch chassis, new engine. But again, those customers were asking us details. So we have applied what we call the exclusive Iron Max treatment to the full family of X-Max, offering a dedicated color, full premium seat with specific leather and treatment, which is replicated in the inner part of the scooter. We have a lot of aluminum used on the vehicle in those two points on the seat, but also in the footrest. And we are also developing more and more accessory package to help customers in the city to select if they want to be more sporty, more urban, or be more protective in, in the winter. Overall, the package is offered on the all different displacements, which are feeding different kind of customer profile in different markets in Europe. But what is remaining is the DNA of the XMAX, which is sporty, which is iconic, uh, which is functional, but is also bringing all the pleasure which Yamaha always gives in riding, whatever is the scooter of its, or its motorcycle. So the new XMAX, Iron Max, is bringing all this for next season uh, in the market. Well, I'm sure it's going to be very successful along with the X-Max family. Ladies and gentlemen, the X-Max 300 Iron Max.
Okay, Paolo. So now we have been launched into this new blue dimension. I have to say, I love it. I feel really comfortable in this. And I think it's linked to my little connection there with the motorsport world because for you guys, this blue color at Yamaha has always meant racing, hasn't it? Yes, this color means a lot to Yamaha. For sure it means racing, but it really means uh, Yamaha DNA. We were a company which was founded, and one week after we were already racing. Actually, we were also winning, but when you race, you can win. Sometimes you don't win. It's really about the commitment into the motorcycle world. Okay, well, you're tempting me there with those bikes. Are we looking at an updated R125 and R3? Yes, I think something more than just updated, as we will see. Ladies and gentlemen, the Yamaha R125 and R3. Now, Paolo, choice is yours. Which one would you like to go through first? Let's start from the R125. As I told you, it's much more than a rework. It's a full new machine, and it's very easy to understand it from the design. It's now really belonging 100% to the R-series family feeling, but it's not just about the design, because we're still talking about the super sport. So we're still talking about performance. So it has a full new engine, which for the first time is bringing to the 125cc motorcycle category, the variable valve system, which means uh, you have, of course, good torque in the bottom without penalizing the high RPM, which is very important for the pleasure of riding. We have a full new delta box frame. We have a new upside down front fork and even the anti-slippery clutch. So, as we can see, it's a full racing package uh, for a 16 years old, for an A1 license holder, which is bringing proudly the full Yamaha DNA in the Supersport 1 to 5 segment. Of course, it's not coming alone because we were talking about how it is important to try really to feed and stimulate young generation and young customer to come into this segment and in general into motorcycle. We have done also a very heavy job on the R3. In this case, the design is very important because the bike looks also a full R series, but it's also important because it's not just designed to be nice. It's has been designed heavily to be functional. You can see the full new fairing, but you can also appreciate we have a lower position of the tank, we have a lower position of the handlebar, which is giving a much more aerodynamic uh, to the full bike, uh, arriving to perform uh, eight uh, kilometers per hour extra top speed, which is, of course, giving extra pleasure, extra fun, potentially 
even extra racing performance. We have also done a full job on the suspension in this case. We have Kayaba in the front, upside down front fork now. We have Kayaba in the rear with the monocross type suspension. So it's a full improved package as well in this case. And of course, uh, uh, it's, it's a bike which is really going into the direction of racing in me. Well, they definitely look ready to get out there and race. Now, Paolo, as presenter for the MotoGP across the Rookies Cup, I'm particularly interested in Yamaha racing programs and how does Yamaha work to engage these new young customers? Yes, let me briefly touch this because, of course, we, are the, we have the products, which are the base, which are, which are important, but it's not just about the products. It's also the way you try to work around the product on many different levels of racing application. The first commitment was to bring back the R1 to be a winning machine. Also in the World Superbike Championship, we won multiple races this year. We have one rider in the top three. We have exploited the potential of the machine. We are also doing very well. I would say we are dominating since two years in the Supersport 600. This year, Sandro Cortez is the new world champion. But I think we, we can be very proud about those let's say, high-end result, but I think we can be even more proud because this is really unique to Yamaha, of what we are trying to build at national level, creating possibility in 17 different European countries to, for 2018, more than 300 Yamaha Blue Crew riders to participate to various programs to finally help them first to have fun, because this is the most important, but also when they show result to grow in, uh, in the racing pyramid to the top. And I'm very happy uh, to share with you that uh, the two guys on stage with us are Matteo Vannucci and Kevi Arduini, respectively, R125. <laughs> Blue Crew winner and R3 Blue Crew winner in Italy. And, and I think finally, this is giving a lot of meaning of what we try to do with our product, but again, what we try to do with our, in this case, racing customer. Very well done, guys. I really hope to see you very soon growing up in the top of the pyramid. But once more, I hope you are really having fun and enjoying being part uh, of, this, uh, of this family, I would say. All right. Then uh, we are talking about uh, particularly this bike, the R3 Cup, and the way the Supersport 300 is really growing. And uh, when we have looked to the bike, we couldn't resist uh, to the, I would say, responsibility of working on it to be ready for next season. Okay, I feel like there's a new racing bike coming along. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Yamaha R3 GYTR brought on stage by Galan Hendra Pratama, 2019 WSS 300 Yamaha Blue Crew rider. Welcome, Galang. Thank you for bringing this on stage now. Thank you. Before I start asking you a few questions, mic working, can you please jump on this bike and give us some highlights, Paolo? I think the right guy to jump on the bike is, uh, is Galang, <laughs> but... Uh, Let's, let's briefly talk about what we have done, really working hard, as I was saying, to be ready for the next season. I'm not going to go through the full spec, but we have developed a complete race pack, which is including, among other features, all-ins racing suspension, cartridge from the front, full all-ins from the rear, Brembo front disc. We have an extensive radiator, which is fitting more the racing usage. And we are also working on a GYTR engine kit, which will be compliant with next year FAM regulation. So we are preparing the bike to do what it has to do, giving the possibility to as much as possible riders to really play with it, enjoy it, but be also very competitive, because finally, when you race, you want to win. All right, then. So, Galang, wild card victory in 2017. 
2018, looking really good with your Bruno win as well. Thank and you. And you were the fastest Blue Crew rider. So what are your expectations in the next season? Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, I have a great memories of that round in Czech Republic, from the pole to the final victory. And I'm really honored of being part of this special Blue Crew team, as well of representing Indonesian rider in the World Championship. And uh, my expectation for the next World Championship are good. I know already all the track. The new bike looks amazing, and I see also evolution of technical FIM rule will make us competing on an equal performance level with all other brands. I have proven to myself I can win the race. But uh, at the end, my dream is to be the first Indonesian world champion with the new R3. Semakin di depan. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Well, Paolo, having such a great Indonesian rider like Galang must be great for your Indonesian fans and that connection's pretty yes, good I'm for Yamaha. Yes, I'm sure. No, Yam Yamaha in Indonesia is really popular, but most of all, I think it's very nice to see how the, the world is becoming small and then how inside the Yamaha family we can help each other, grow each other. Very proud to bring the Semakinti Depan logo on the R3 Blue Crew program here in Europe because it's really connecting the dots, connecting the people of, at, at a global level. Of course, we are equally proud to have guys like Kevin, which are racing with us and will keep racing with us. So this is the essence of what, of what we try to do, really bring those guys further and increase uh, the passion for the brand and for motorsport. Yes, thank you to Kevin and to Galang. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Yamaha R3 and R3 GYTR. Then, Paolo, thank you for starting us off this evening. It's been a pleasure sharing the stage Thanks with you. Thanks a lot, Amy. Thank you to everybody, and uh, there is more to come, so enjoy the show. <laughs> there is more to come. <laughs> Well, as you can see, we are now in sport touring. And ladies and gentlemen, this is our next world and one for those riders who love to dream, who love to travel and live on the road. So to look into it, I'm pleased to welcome the Yamaha Motor Europe powered two-wheeler division manager, Mr. Clement Villet. Hello, Clement. Good evening. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Now, just a moment ago, we had Paolo talking to us about the leaning multi-wheel technology, but that is not just confined to scooters because we saw last year with the launch of Nikon. Yes, good evening, Amy. Yes, absolutely. This is exactly what we've been explaining over the last few months, in fact. Um, talking about leaning multi-wheel technology, from the beginning when our engineers have been starting to work on this technology, they immediately realized that uh, it would generate a big benefit also for touring motorcycle. In fact, this technology applied to a motorcycle really emphasize, multiplicate the cornering, the carving experience, the, the real uh, emotions you can get when uh, carving a bike, when riding on twisty roads, and especially uh, because of the extra confidence you can get when riding this bike. So, based on that, this has been why we applied this technology on the Niken, which has been introduced last year. And it's true that when you look at the bike, you can immediately understand. By having double surface between the tires on the, um, the tarmac, 
immediately you can understand that having this extra grip feeling gives some extra confidence when braking, when carving, and this is something that we've been explaining over the last few months since we introduced the bike to the market, to the journalist first, and then to customers. In fact, this Nike really handled like no other motorcycle. And this is why just after launching the bike to the press last uh, spring in Austria, we've been going all around Europe, giving the possibility to customers, to riders, to test this bike. At the end, we could, uh, I think, offer 5,000 riders uh, the chance to test the bike, to enjoy, and then to understand the uniqueness, the uniqueness, the sporty character of the bike, mixed with real touring capabilities. And I must say that, uh, of course, we were impressed. I was impressed first time I test the bike in Japan, and then some months after, it was a pleasure to see how much our customers, our even journalists could understand the benefit of it, and they were convinced about the concept. They were convinced, uh, and I would say that even the skeptical ones, because there were some skeptics, of course, adding a third wheel on a motorcycle looks a bit strange to some of them. At the end, they recognize that it brings real an extra benefit. So, based on this, we also noticed, and we've been listening to what the market uh, told us uh, from the launch to the introduction, and clearly, we understood that this bike should be positioned as a real touring machine. And this is something we took into, con uh, into consideration, in fact. All right, well, you've certainly got our interest going. Let's take a look at this bike. seeing the new Yamaha Nikon GT live up here on the stage. So accompanied also by Vivaldi, the Four Seasons. I quite like the thinking behind that one. Yes, in fact, yes. This is a brand new Nikon GT, which has been developed as a real all-weather, four-season uh, riding machine. This is probably why you noticed that <laughs> we've been listening to Vivaldi Four Seasons. This is a bike which, in fact, includes all what you may need to ride a motorcycle, touring usage, on the mountain, uh, all the year long. And in fact, if we start just summing up uh, what we know about Niken, we introduced it one year ago. Of course, the bike is equipped with our uh, advanced leaning multi-wheel technology, with uh, specifically developed uh, CP3 engine. And then, on top of that, we have the D mode with three engine modes. We have the cruise control, traction control, and quick shifter, which make that the, the Nikon itself was already a well-equipped touring machine. But our idea was to go one step further, and then, in fact, listening to our customer to bring them what they need to keep using their bike all the year long. And this is why we developed this Nikon GT, which has been developed as a real four-season. Four-season GT equipment means high screen, comfort seat, grip eater, extra 12-volt outlet, 25 liters side cases. Uh, we have also, I think, yes, larger grab bar for the passenger. And uh, we have um, main stain. 
And this bike, the Nikon GT, is available in two dedicated GT colors okay. next to the Nikon. Well, looking at it, are you now saying that we consider this and categorize it as a fully fledged sport tourer? Yes, exactly. Uh, as you know, we have a clear segmentation to make sure that we can address the customer in the proper way and match their needs, their expectation. Um, yes, Nike and Nike and GT are now officially part of the sport touring segment. In fact, these uh, model groups is now within the segment and also playing a key role from now on in one of the most dynamic, one of the most successful segments we have in our lineup. We can just take a few seconds to have a look at the figures we have there. In fact, uh, as I said, sport touring segment is one of our most successful segments, representing up to 73,000 uh, cumulative sales from 2015. And on top of that, I just want to take a few seconds to uh, highlight and to mention the big success we had this year. If you remember, we launched the second generation of Tracer 900 last year, and this Tracer 900 has been a huge success, showing, demonstrating that Yamaha clearly understands where the customer wants us to bring them. At the moment, Tracer 900 represents 64% of our total segment sales, but of course, by having now two new Nike in segment, the mix will change a bit. Of course, as you said, Nike and Nike and GT are part of the family. They are part of the segment, which means that um, the 2019 lineup will include the two Nikens, will include the Tracer 700 on GT declinations, and we will have next to that our emblematic FGR, which exists in three versions in Europe. I think we have the ultimate selection of two and three wheel sport touring machines, and I think with that we can satisfy all kind of uh, needs from our touring customers. Well, thank you, Clement. It's very exciting to see this bike now and that family of other bikes. And uh, thank you very much for your insights. Thank you. Then. Well, we are now in a new world. This is the sport heritage world where Yamaha has reached back to its past successful models and it is revitalizing them thanks to modern technology. And Clement, this is all about the faster sun's philosophy. Yes, different vibes, different world. But yes, the faster sun's philosophy means a lot to Yamaha. It's a way to express who we are, who we were in the past, who we want to be. In fact, sport heritage model is a perfect combination of a timeless design, cool retro looks, combined, of course, with the latest Yamaha technology. As we are used to say in Yamaha, these bikes are inspired by the past, built for the future. And in fact, this is also a way for us to play with our codes, with our history. And our Fast Sense models, in fact, are reflecting our heritage of motorcycling. It's a way to play with icons, with iconic bikes. And as you will see there, as you will see later, it's not the first time we do that. We've been doing this in the past, and I think it has been quite successful. If we look at the sales result from 2015 to 2018, we reached more, almost 30, 35,000 units sold in this segment, which is a growing segment where we see more and more customers expecting Yamaha to play around. Um, in this graph, you can also uh, see one bike which is clearly playing a big role, which is the XSR 700. XSR 700 is representing close to 40% of the total segment sales. And this is also one of the bikes we've been playing with, I mean, to play with our history, with our heritage. And you will see, yes, on the photo, this is exactly the logic we have been following uh, one and a half year ago, when we were playing with uh, the visual, the identity of the iconic 650 XS2, 1972, 
and uh, having a similar livery applied to XSR 700. And this is exactly what we wanted to do again, being even more impactful, once again playing with an icon, with a legend, probably one of the most iconic, one of the most successful uh, Yamaha bikes in Europe. This is a real tribute to the 70s, a real tribute to the 80s. As I said, a big success, a bike which is well known also for its very iconic color schemes, scrambler looking. Anyway, you will see. Okay, let's take a look at it. Our 700 X tribute and Clermont. What a great interpretation of that bike! It reminds me so much of that bike. Yes, we had to do it well. It's an <laughs> icon, and we we did the maximum to make something clearly inspired. Uh, of course, the name, the colors, the classic scrambler uh, look and feel, the riding position, the classic design. I think this is a real tribute to our iconic XT500. And for this one, we've been deciding to play with uh, the 1981 livery, which is, from my taste, one of the ones I like, really. So, as I said, this is a bike which has been, in fact, inspired by a legend, so we had to make it nice, and also we had to pay tribute to the big success we had with this bike. Can you imagine that XT500 has been sold from 1976 until 1992? representing more than 60,000 units sold in the world. One of the most iconic bikes, but also a bike which is also very important for many customers. And many customers who could enjoy riding, adventure riding, discovering the world, riding an XT500, and also inspiring kids. For me, I remember when I was a kid, XT500 was a legend. And I think we can be proud to introduce this bike to the market, which is really good looking. Um, I think we can have a look at the spec. Uh, yeah, please. If we want to talk through the, take a deeper look at this bike. Yes, thank you. Yes, um, as I said, we talked about the livery. So this is a 1981. Uh, there is the iconic and flat, uh, flat style, uh, flat seat with XT style. We've been also um, implementing a specific negative LCD meter um, to have a narrow uh, tail. Uh, we've been implementing this specific uh, minimalist LED uh, LED tail lights. Uh, we also have the aluminum radiator covers, the handlebar, which is just uh, making the bike totally different and giving this real scrambler feeling. And we've been also, of course, um, we wanted to give real light off-road capabilities by implementing the specific footrests and also specific tires, which are the Pirelli MT60 RS, giving possibility to customer to play on the asphalt, but also going a bit off on the track. Uh, last but not least, this bike is also equipped with an optional uh, Akrapovic black-painted high-mounting exhaust. 
I think we have a nice package. Yeah, I think it's looking very good. It's ready to get out there on the roads. Ladies and gentlemen, the new XSR 700 X Tribute. Thank you, Amy. Clément, thank you so much for joining me on the stage tonight. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our journey still gets more interesting. We've already looked at seven new models, and we're not stopping yet. So it is now my pleasure to bring onto stage the first European president of Yamaha Motor Europe and the executive officer of Yamaha Motor Company, Mr. Eric Desaines. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very pleased to be there again on stage tonight. We have many guests, a big audience, but also a lot of uh, fans watching after us on uh, their screen. Uh, it can be by Sky TV as uh, different social medias. And it's a great pleasure because already, honestly, I was just uh, waiting on my seat, listening to all these comments. I went, wow, the menu is quite long and big and uh, pleasant. And uh, the pro my problem, but perhaps it's just my personal feeling, every time I see a new bike, I say, ah, it could be mine. And so uh, <laughs> at least two times tonight, I wanted just to buy the bike on stage. So I, I hope many others uh, have got the same feeling. But more than, than that, honestly, Yamaha is I think a specific brand, a unique brand for two things. The first is that we have always been protecting the idea that we have to be an actor in any segment of the market. We really try to respect all our customers, any profile of customers, and always trying to do our best to propose the correct product with the Yamaha taste. The second thing is that we always take care about the customers. Hidaka-san explained in, this, in his introduction how much important is this connection with our customers to be customer-centric, which means that we don't want to sell a bike to somebody. Sure, we, we, we would like to select a Yamaha for the next bike, but we want to be sure they enjoy the full experience with their bikes. And this is why Yamaha is making, making so many efforts to be sure that the way you can experience your Yamaha riding your bike in the best condition with the best support of a Yamaha. And this is why we decide to create that logo, which is you, which means Yamaha offers you the best. And we try to offer the best. And it can be from the period where you want to make the to conclude the purchase, but more than that, after when you can get the experience. We have got with Paolo Pavesio a clear explanation about the Blue Cruise strategy. On a super sport racing field, it's nice to win in MotoGP. It's even better when all the customers can enjoy to be part of the racing family. We have many owners club, and we try to help them to make this experience alive. Unfortunately, we have got so many success in our history that now we have thousands and thousands of fans in Europe being active uh, with their Honors Club. But also, we have now a new program we are very proud also to explain tonight, which is about destination Yamaha Motor. Because we realize that in this spirit of adventure, the spirit of the freedom of motorcycle, we have got many operators been selected by Yamaha, and where you can go in more than 160 destinations in the world just to make your experience riding a motorbike. So we can make live a test. You have a nice woman. <laughs> Nobody can imagine that she's a very good rider. You are. Hey, hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah you are. I can do oh, it. Okay, let's say, the, where do you want to go with your motorbike? Okay, this is like, well, I've got the whole world to choose from. Yeah, it's like any, Argentina, anywhere. Mongolia. Vietnam, okay. which one do you like? <laughs> She's a good customer because we have destination in Vietnam, in Argentina, right. in Mongolia. So this is correct answers. Thank so you. definitively, please select the world and try to see where you can go with us. And this is also very important for us because this experience 
will make the motivation and the sense being linked to Yamaha, to our brand. And this is something which is, again, being reinforced during the last year, and it will be even more from next year. So then, based on that, we wanted to explore also all these new territories, this sense of adventure, and we wanted to consider where could we go for the next? Because as you know, we have a long culture in off-road. Yes, I know. It's always, Yamaha has always been about keeping on exploring, even since back in the 70s. Yeah, so you remember that when Yamaha arrived in Europe, it was with a clear innovative spirit. Yamaha did not want to copy the others. We had our own way. And it was about fun, light, performance, and reliability. And in this year, it was even matching with two-stroke technology. And when we arrived in Europe, very quickly, we were an innovative brand because Yamaha has been inventing the trail bike. The GT1 first, but then after all a succession of different models to represent this freedom on two wheels. And that was the Yamaha Touch. And we, from the two-stroke, we went step-by-step step to the four-stroke and until the XT500. Clément Villet was just explaining this tribute to the XT500. And that was the new adventure spirit adventure. of Yamaha. You've said it, adventure. I think this is our next world, isn't it, Eric? Yeah, finally. And, and also, it, it, it was clearly a revolution in that mm. time because with our bikes, people could make a lot of experience. And perhaps during the last years, you know, in Europe, the market went more and more on roadster road bike. And after the crisis, after 2008, we wanted all together with our engineers, with Yamaha Motor Company, how to build up our future. And we have been considering, let's start with a roadster. And this is how we finally developed the new MT series, MT07, MT09, MT010. It has been a great success, and we have seen some figures before. But then, after this success, four years ago, we were thinking how to reinvent also our adventure bikes. Because in Europe, there are many adventure bikes from competitors. But when you look what it is, the majority is just a touring bike with some adventure clothes. It's like if tonight I am here and I just take a, some jacket, strange cap, and I say I am an adventurer. Nobody trusts. No. We wanted to consider how to re reinvent, which means with our DNA, lightweight, performance, reliability, emotional bike to ride. And that was our dream. And this is why we present in 2016 a new concept, which was the T7, to measure the temperature of the market, how the people will react. And do you remember how they react? I think they were pretty positive, weren't they? About the new adventure bike that you're developing? Yeah, you but should I say, think that we wow, should it work. was a boom. No, no, it was a boom. It was a boom. Well, was we a present boom. the bike, <laughs> and we immediately receive orders. I say, shit, too quickly. So it comes too quickly, immediately. So we could feel that the reaction of the market was Eric. already there. And then oh. it was perhaps the opening of a new chapter and some video to support the chapter. That's it, Let's the go. new chapter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the new chapter. <laughs>
and we decide two things. The first, A, let's go for Tenere, because the Tenere was a, our iconic model, supported by all the Dakar legend in the 80s years. And then we were considering, with this concept of bike, we can be proud to reuse again our Tenere name. First, and second thing was, let's go now for a real proto, which could be as close as possible to the final model. And last year, you remember, we presented the T7, which was the Tenere World Raid concept. And during all the year, we have been really testing that bike in all territories everywhere. The toughest region in the world, South America, we have uh, Argentina lover here, <laughs> but uh, we went in Argentina, Brazil, Australia, and also in Africa to test the bike in the true real conditions. And because it was not enough, we have been selecting the best testing rider we could imagine. And then we start to make the dreaming list. Ah, Stefan Peter Ransel, mm, yeah, it should be nice, yeah. <laughs> Adrien van Beveren, ah, yeah, sure, yeah, factory rider, let's try. <laughs> and we were considering uh, Rodney Fagotter, yes. And then we continue to add. And fortunately, we have a lot of riders being loyal to Yamaha. And honestly, we love our riders. But fortunately, some of them love also our brand. And we could also support, get the support of David Fretinier, Nick Sanders, Alexandro Boturi, Cristobal Guerrero, and even Her Herbert Schwartz, and I'm very proud tonight because all of them, they are here, sitting on the front, front first row to support the introduction of this new bike. They have been part of the job. And finally, when they finish the test, they did, okay, do the report, do the report. And finally, they were surprised because they, they called me, some of them they called me and said, Eric, okay, this is fantastic for off-road. I could really feel it's so good, so performant, but for the final bike, it will be a bit less, but you know, the level is so high, it's, it will be good enough. And I say, hey, no, guys, the bike you have been testing will be the bike. We don't want to change anything. So this is why they can be proud about the way they have been testing the bike, because the bike they have been riding with will be the bike any customers will be able to ride with able from next year. It? And now I think uh, it's perhaps time to rebuild. I mean, oh. I think you might be slightly interested, <laughs> are you not? Yeah, so now <laughs> let's go for it. Let's. Yeah.
Wow, ladies and gentlemen, the terrific new Tenere 700 brought onto stage by the Yamalube Yamaha official rally rider, Adrian Van Beveren. Hello, Adrian. <laughs> now, thank you for bringing this beauty onto stage before asking you some questions. Eric, if you could please run through some highlights of this amazing bike. Yeah, I think that uh, definitely this bike is a pure off-road bike. Obviously, we start from the engine, and we are very lucky manufacturer because we have always very strong, torquey engine. And this CP2 engine is a fantastic one. Light, compact, torque with a lot of torque and good power. And around the engine, we develop all the bike with a specific chassis, which is a pure off-road chassis. And then you can see the front face, which is exactly the same as our Dakar bikes with the four legs. And we have the, this front fork, adjustable front fork, upside down, 43 millimeters diameter. But also on the rear, we have a remotely adjustable rear suspension. And then we have, as for any off-road bike, 21-inch front wheel, 18-inch rear wheel with spoke wheels to absorb any shock. The fuel capacity is 16 liters, which means more than 350 kilometers range distance, considering the low consumption. And also, you can see the tachymeter and all the instrument panel in an upper position to be sure that when you ride it, you can sit or you can stand up. You have always a very good visibility about the instrument panel and all the way you can control the bike. So everything, and I'm sure you will turn around the bike after, you will see that all the details have been developed in respect with this off-road application. As I said before, we are a lucky manufacturer. We are covering many segments, many niche of product, and we have already a very good bike, which is a Tracer 700, which is a versatile touring bike. So when we do develop a Tenere, it must be a Tenere, full off-road. And I think that all our engineers and ourselves can be proud. And I would like to thank again all the effort of our engineers to develop such nice bike, which is yeah, a dream for us. Which Adrian has had the chance to ride yeah. already. Now, Adrian, you have been the Tenere 700 World Raid Tester for the South American stage, but you weren't only testing it at that point because you were actually reliving a very profound moment. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, you know, you know my, my test of this, uh, of this Tenere 700 just starts on the exact place where I crashed on the last Dakar. Uh, a place which has created a special emotional moment for me. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm now 100% and super happy to keep living my dream. Yeah, well at that moment you were in fact leading Dakar. So going on to this bike, how was the riding? Um, you know with the, with the bike, I I try to ride on all kinds of terrain you can find in the Dakar race. And um, I've been very surprised. Um, you know what? I ride a 450 engine, usually. And uh, this, this 700 engine was very, very funny. And it was the first time for me to ride this kind of strong and powerful engine on this kind of terrain. And definitely the bike can pass in sand, in dunes, in rocks, in riverbeds everywhere. It's definitely a bike for the desert. Well, you must be feeling pretty ready for the next Dakar then. <laughs> I'm, it was a long year. I had a, a long recovery, um, but I work a lot for that. And really, I'm now 100%. And I can wait for the, for the start of the next Dakar. <laughs> All right, brilliant. Well, best of luck going ahead with that, Adrian. And Thank Eric, this WR450F Dakar has got a very, very special livery that I think we'd all quite like to see. Yeah, but I, I think that, again, we could really feel from the beginning, from the way we have been developing this bike, that we wanted to be 100% pure. The integrity of this bike in connection with off-road application is true. And this is why, from last year, but especially this year, we decided to apply the same livery on the Dakar machine as the bike our customers will buy from next year. Because never we could have the link so strong between our racing bike, the bike Adrien will push to the win, and the bike our customers could buy to discover the world. So it's very great to have now this 
combination and this link, this bridge being so strong again. So thanks to Adrien and all the Dakar team. And also I was thinking, looking at this bike, uh, I was just yeah, thinking about Stefan Peter Hansel because when you remember that Stefan has been the last guy to win with the twin engine bike on the Dakar, and honestly, the bike was a bit more heavier and more difficult to ride than this one. So it was an exploit for him, but I think today it's an exploit for our engineers to make this bike so light, so compact, and I'm, I hope that many, many customers will enjoy it. Thank you. Well, best of luck, Adrian. and please stay with us on stage. But Eric, from talking to you this evening, I think we can all really just feel your absolute love for racing. You think so? <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sometimes, <laughs> yes. No, definitely, yeah, I love racing, but also, more than that, I love Yamaha, who love racing. Mm. And Yamaha never cheat with racing. From the beginning, we have, our company has been set up, July 1st, 1955, and less than 10 days later, we were racing our first race, winning our first race. And for me, there is sense. And never Yamaha failed and always support this history and these values. And finally, when we speak about racing in motorcycle field, it means off-road, like Adrien, rallies, enduro, supermotor, motocross, supercross. But also, we speak about on-road. And on on-road, we have seen before all this super sport range we have. And at the top of this super sport range, we have the fantastic YZF R1. And the new R1 we just launched in 2015 with some improvement this year. This bike has been from the beginning winning a lot of races and title, national superbike title, world championship with the GMT 94 last year, and we continue to win, and we start to win now also in World Superbike with Michael van der Mark, who finished this year on the podium, third. We are also with, with Alex Loves, where we won some races. But more than that, there is a pure iconic race in the world, which is the eight hours of Suzuka. Mm. And in 2015, when we launched the new models, we went to the Suzuka eight hours to challenge, and the bike won. Fantastic <laughs> win. Yeah. The, day, the year after, because this is a challenge of the company, hey, let's go to win the second time. Everybody work hard, and finally we win for the second time. Then what, you, what do you say if you are the president of Yamaha? <laughs> say, let's go to win the third time. And then we went back again, and we had a third consecutive win. And this year, everybody was a bit checking <laughs> what will be the mission this year. Let's go for a fourth win. Yeah, and we won again. And it was a fantastic, memorable victory. First, because it's a record. Four consecutive wins in Suzuka. The second thing is that in 2018, it means that it is the 20th anniversary of the R1. Mm. The R1 was born in 1998. And this is why the livery of the bike during the Suzuka 8 hours was exactly the replica of the genuine R1 of 1998. And it was a fantastic celebration, winning with this livery and this bike. But this celebration was a bit far from Milano and from today. So we were considering perhaps we should celebrate also tonight, all together, this fantastic win and the 20th anniversary of the R1. And this is why we have a special surprise for you tonight. Oh my gosh, yeah. I think we're all rather curious. Let's see it. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome for the Pata Yamaha World Superbike Rider and multi Suzuka 8 Hours winner, it's Michael oh van der Mark. <laughs> Michael, thank you for bringing this on stage. Now, you had your first year getting the hang of the bike, and then you shined in 2018. You had 
10 podium finishes and uh, those two World Superbike wins at Donington Park. So a satisfying season. Yeah, you know, I, I can't believe the season's already over and uh, probably because we had so many good results this year. So uh, now it's time to rest and uh, prepare for next season. And, you know, I want to do better than this year. So our goal is to win. So how exciting must it be to win at Suzuka 8 Hours? Yeah, you know, uh, endurance racing is always something, something different and uh, racing at Suzuka is special. But to win this year with the R1 and this iconic livery uh, made it even more special. Now, Eric, speaking of how this bike is looking, isn't, isn't this the bike that won that victory? It looks very similar. Uh, definitely, I think that if Michael is riding it, <laughs> it can win. If I ride, I'm not sure. Because finally, it's very close to the factory bike of Suzuka. But what we wanted to celebrate is that the celebration of the 20th anniversary is valid if we can share with our customers. So we have been deciding to make a limited edition. 20th anniversary means 20 units of a very special bike, non-homologated, purely to use on track, because this is a racing spec bike, and we try to put all the technology we have been considering and developing around the eight hours of Suzuka bike and our World Super, Superbike bike. And this is why you can turn around and first, the more visible is the livery. But also the livery is applied on a full carbon fairing seat cover about the tank. So everything has been done to be sure that the bike will be the lightest. And to give you an indication, fully weight with a full tank, the total weight is under 170 kilos which is really top, top for a racing bike. And then we have our GYTR racing parts. GYTR means genuine Yamaha technology for racing. And we have ECU, the electronic, the high wireless, but also the quick shuttle to be sure that the response will be quick. Then also you have to be quick in your brain, but that's another story. <laughs> and then you have the Olids shock absorber. So we have Olids front fork, but also full adjustable rear shock absorber. We have the racing radiator. We have also the racing Brembo caliper, the full Akrapovic titanium line and muffler. And all this bike is assembled by our official World Endurance team, the yacht, who is taking care of each bike, and each bike will have a number on it. So it's a very exclusive series, but again, it's like a, a gift to our customers to be sure that when Michael is winning, when Nakasuga is winning, when Alex is winning in Suzuka, it's not only for our brand, it's also to, to give something back to our customers. And this is why we are so happy to have the possibility to present this bike, which is another bike I should buy again. So it's a problem for me tonight. <laughs> Too many things to buy. But OK, it's, it's really nice, and I hope that all the customers who could ride this bike will really enjoy it in respect with all the legend of our R1. No, it's absolutely wonderful. And indeed, now with these two bikes on stage, we have seen nine new Yamaha models all the way through from the commuter scooter to the R1 GYTR. And ladies and gentlemen, that has been such a journey. Thank you to Michael. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Eric. That concludes our night for our presentation. Now, <laughs> we'll clap for everyone. It has been a pleasure to have you all join us tonight. The future is certainly looking very fast. Thank you for this evening, and here's to a great year of races. We are now going to have a photo session for our media that are with us here in the stadium. So if I could please invite back our guests and speakers back onto the stage. Yeah, so Ida san and also Shimamoto-san. Shimamoto-san is uh, the chief general manager in charge of all the product development. So big applaud to them because they are the father of all the models we have with us tonight. So please, Ilaka san yeah. Shimamoto san also. Um, I'll put myself on the end. <laughs> Yeah, I have to take my, after my wife complained.
So now, second picture with the thermal. So, yeah. So let's do, yeah. In Japan, always two, two pictures, one with the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Now, you are all welcome tomorrow morning at the Yamaha booth at Eichma. It will be a pleasure to see oh. you all there. Thank, thank you for joining you. us tonight and keep on revving. Adrian. Thank you.